Um, next up here, we've got uh, one more presentation followed by a bit of a break. Um, uh, next up, we'll have Yao Yao Ding. Um, he is joining us as a PhD student from uh, University of Toronto, and he's here to present about uh, HIDET, which is Task Mapping uh, Programming Paradigm for Deep Learning Tensor Programs. So take it away, Yao Yao. OK. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, um, I'm Yao Ding. I'm currently a first year PhD student at the University of Toronto, uh, and I appreciate the opportunity to share our recent work, uh, Headed Task Mapping Programming Paradigm for Deep Learning Intensive Programs. Uh, um, this work is a collaboration between Cody, Bojian, uh, Yiji, Ida, and Gennady. Okay. Um, uh, with the development of deep learning, uh, there are more, more and more uh, interesting applications are getting accessible to the public. For example, we can draw a finger with a simple description or chat with a dead chatbot in our daily language. Um, each round of this application, will uh, there will be a bunch of tensor programs that will be run uh, under the hood. However, it's very expensive to serve um, such an uh, application if there are many users. So it's very important to run it fast to have better user experience and uh, reduce the cost. Um, there are different ways to generate the tensor programs and apply the optimization. Uh, for example, we can use a vendor library. However, um, by write, manually writing this um, uh, tensor programs, it's very, very complex and engineering heavy. And uh, it's uh, very hard to support, support the flexible fusion. Um, and we also have a deep learning compiler such as TVM. Um, however, um, because uh, it mainly relies on the, we call it declarative looper and the scheduling, there are some optimizations that are not related to the loop transformation are hard to express. So it, it can suffer from suboptimal performance and non-tuning time. Uh, in this work, we proposed a new way to construct tensor programs. We call it task mapping programming paradigm. Uh, it's simple compared with the many write intensive programs, and uh, it's highly flexible to implement the optimizations, and uh, it can greatly reduce the 2D time. Um, this, uh, I believe we are very familiar with TVM, so I will go quick on this part. Um, TV, for in TVM, each operator has its, its computation definition, and uh, it will first generate the a default program based on the computation definition and to apply a series of um, declarative schedule primitives. Um, for example, we can um, split the outer loops and uh, reorder the outer most four loops and uh, bind some loops to the hardware access to transform the program from a, from a default program to a more performance scheduled pro um, tensor program. Okay, um, we call this declarative loop for instance, scheduling because it's used declarative schedule primitives to transform the loop structure of the tensor program to make it more performant. Um, Usually, we can use template-based um, ways to apply the schedule primitives or use some predefined rules to automatically generate the um, primitives. And uh, the hyperparameters used in the primitives can also be tuned so, so that uh, we can have, uh, we can automatically find the best uh, hyperparameter choose, choice um, for each uh, input size. And this process is called kernel tuning. Um, however, um, there is one limitation in, um, in this uh, workflow. Um, for start from the default program, um, we can um, get different tensor programs by applying the schedule primitives. And uh, those prim tensor programs can span a uh, program space that we can, can be expressed in this way. However, uh, in this work, we have observed some tensor programs that are hard to be expressed in this way. And, uh, um, we call it the limited expressness of in this kind of scheduling, and uh, it, it will make um, it cannot um, it may make it suffer from suboptimal performance. For example, it's very hard to express non-loop related optimizations, and uh, if uh, it also has a problem to so to have efficient support for the partial tile. I mean, we split a loop with a uh, with a factor that is not a proper factor of the loop length which makes it tune a long time. And uh, I'll give an uh, example to, to, uh, to, uh, to show this. Uh, in the on CUDA platform, we, for uh, efficient metric application, we will parse tile it on the 
same matrix and uh, dispatch each tile into a thread block and uh, repeat two steps. One step is to load data from global memory to shared memory. One is to use a computation um, and finally write the result to the to the global memory. Um, we can we can write the stop and the four stops into a, a skeleton of this code and basically pay attention there the loop in, in it, which in, in, in enumerates the k tiles and the two steps in it. Um, one optimization is to, um, first, what, what's the problem of, the, of, of this problem, of this tensor program? Uh, in step two, we mainly use the uh, um, com memory com communication uh, resources, and the second is the uh, computation resources. Um, and to, um, to make it uh, work at the same time, we can uh, use double buffering to parallelize these two parts. Um, and uh, basically, we can uh, allocate two buffers for A and B. And uh, in each iteration, we preload the next tile and we can do the computation for a current tile. Um, however, it's very hard to express this in TVM using the loop transformations. Um, so TVM has resort to some workaround to, to, to express this kind of optimization. For example, we can add some specialized annotation and the using the compiler path to implement such organization. And then we can also start from a backbone that we has already implemented this, uh, this kind of optimization. However, this will increase the co compiler complexity and it's not extensible if we have new organizations that cannot be expressed by loop, for, loop, loop transforms. Um, in this work, we propose task mapping program paradigm. Um, um, in basically, we directly write the tensor program with task mapping and the lower the task mapping. Um, you can think the task mapping contains all the information that's um, previously described using the scheduled primitives. <clears throat> and we use the task mapping to replace it, and uh, which allows us to directly manipulate the tensor program um, and uh, instead of use some primitive to mani manipulate. Okay, um, I'll go quick on this part too. Um, you know, for task mapping, we um, we we'll consider a, a workload in the in the tensor computation. Um, for example, we can copy a grid of um, 64 by 8 numbers from global memory to shared memory. And uh, we can do this using 128 threads. Um, we can abstract this workload into 512 tasks. And each task is a copy of single number. Um, and the, the assignment and ordering means, um, the, the assignment means we can uh, how how can we assign the tasks to the workers? And the ordering means how we uh, order the tasks that assign to the same worker. Um, what if, well, what task mapping does is to describe the task assignment and ordering. So um, in, in in it and okay. Uh, in this example, we have partitioned the tasks into four parts and. Uh, um, assign, <clears throat> assign a single number in each part to a thre thread so that each, each thread will have four uh, tasks to execute. Okay, um, I'll give some formal definition uh, of task mapping. Um, each task mapping has a worker set which represents uh, parallelizable workers. Um, for example, it can be a thread in, in CUDA or a thread block or warp in CUDA or a thread in a CPU environment. And uh, in previous example, we have 128 uh, workers. Um, we also have a task domain to, to express the, use a hypercube to express the uh, parallelizable tasks that we hope to work on. And uh, uh, in previous example, we have a two dimension hypercube, which has uh, 64 times eight tasks to work on. And the uh, task mapping is a function that maps each worker to an ordered list of tasks. Uh, for example, in, in previous example, we can map a worker W to four tasks, and the, each task can be calculated directly from the worker index. Um, there are two uh, fundamental um, task mappings that we found is, they are very useful, um, um, and we'll show them. Um, first, uh, in this slide, uh, we will use the box to represent a task and the number in the box to rep represent the task execution order and the, the task assignment are represented by different colors. Um, the first task mapping uh, is repeat uh, task mapping. Um, this task mapping has a single worker and uh, uh, up to a number of dimensions of tasks and uh, it assigns all the tasks to the same worker. 
Um, and the second task mapping is special task mapping. It can it has the same number of workers and tasks, and we assign a single task to each worker. Um, okay, these are the two very basic task mappings. And the, what's interesting is that we can compose different task mappings to to get very useful and and task mappings. Um, because we ha we can uh, observe a hierarchical structure in the commonly used task mappings in the tensor programs. Um, for example, for this repeat one three task mapping, it has three tasks, and the um, if the if each task has some subtasks and each worker has some sub workers, and they have a, uh, they can be described in another task mapping. For example, in in this case, we have special two two, and we can compose them together to get a composed task mapping. Um, the task mapping composition makes us to construct more hierarchical structured and uh, more composed and uh, more complex task mappings and uh, in a very clean and uh, uh, way. Okay, um, and uh, we can um, and we can find, have we have found that the task mapping is not commut commutative, and so that we cannot directly change the order of ta task mapping composition. And and the the good news is that the task mapping composition is associative, so it, it doesn't matter about the the applying order of the task mappings. Okay. Um. No. Now let's have a look at how can we use the task mapping and uh, its benefits. Um. On the on on this uh, code, uh, we we uh, define two task mappings and uh, used to load the data from global memory to shared memory for matrix A and B. Um, first, we need to define the task mapping and, uh, and to iterate the tasks assigned to a, a, a worker by giving its worker index to the to the mapping, and uh, it will return uh, the task indexes that assigned to this worker, and we directly implement the task in the loop body. Um, it, uh, it's very flex uh, it's highly flexible um, because we can we allow the developer to directly manipulate the tensor program in a much granularity so it can it's very easy to implement more of um non loop related optimizations and a high better performance um second we can um you can you implement efficient partial tile um um and uh, to reduce the uh, uh, schedule space and optimization time uh, third, uh, and we also proposed a fusion called post scheduling fusion, which can automatically uh, fuse the surrounding operators uh, into the tensor program after we schedule it. Okay, um, this slide should uh, give an example of what is the post scheduling fusion. And um, basically, we first uh, give you a computing graph, we will first um, get the fusible subgraphs and uh, schedule the anchor operator in it. The anchor operator is similar like uh, in TVM. It's the most important, uh, most complex operator that may have may have reduced or, uh, yeah. And the and we'll use our schedule system to schedule it into a tensor program. And the, we can fuse the prolog and epilog. And the prolog means the operator before it, and epilog is uh, the operator after it. We can automatically fuse this uh, prolog and uh, and epilog into the scheduled tensor program by rewriting the tensor program. Um, this will simplify the complexity to deal with the uh, uh, fusion. So in TVM, usually we, we, we do this uh, in our schedule template or using answer to directly generate it. But in this way, we can we can define some very complex schedule template, but uh, leave the uh, our compiler to automatically fuse them for us. Okay, um, and the. Uh, we also uh there is an ongoing work called head script we we hope to um um we hope to write the tensor program directly in python this is inspired by the taiji and the python and the Tim script and basically we directly translate the python s2 to headed ir uh, which can act as a front end of tensor program ir in headed and the way and we direct we integrated the task mapping abstraction in it, so so that we can directly use the use the task mapping in the in it, and the it support the operator tuning, so that uh, we can tune the hyperparameters used in the task mapping, and and the support of post scheduling fusion. Um, let's have a look at the compilation flow of Hadit. Um, 
we we mainly implemented it in in Python from scratch. Um, and uh, there are two IRs: graph, computation graph IR and tensor program IR. Um, for a given um, model, for uh, for example the Onyx model or PyTorch model, we will um, import it into our computation graph IR and do some graph level optimizations, such as uh, pattern based fusion or or operatory write. Yeah. And um, I dispatch each operator to our scheduling system. We use task mapping program paradigms to schedule it into a tensor program and apply some optimizations and uh, generate generate code to the target pro platform. We also implement two scheduling uh, mechanism in template based and rule based. Our, our rule based is, very, is uh, simplified, so and it will not tune, but the template based scheduling can tune the complex operators. Um, we benchmark on five representative uh, deep learning models and compare against PyTorch uh, and Onyx Runtime and TVM, uh, which is the 0 0.9 uh, version and equipped with auto TVM and Answer. Um, and this experiment is, well, is done on RTX 3090 with a very powerful CPU. Okay, um, this is the uh, the result of comparison. Um, we can see that head can achieve up to 1.46 speed up and 1.22 on average. Um, uh, this because head can achieve, uh, can implement many uh, optimizations that I was implemented in the library, but has not been implemented by, by TVM at that time. Okay. Um, we can also greatly reduce the tuning time by 11 times compared with answer and 20 times by auto TVM um, because we, our scheduling uh, uh, space uh, has been greatly reduced. Um, we also compare the quality of schedule space um, in TV, auto TVM answer and head it. We use the operator in ResNet 50 as an example. Um, here, um, the, we use the uh, actual measured schedules in during tuning from auto TVM and the answer to represent the schedule space. Um, we can find that um, because had it implement more optimization. So even though our schedule space is much smaller, it can its quality and is better than schedule space adopted by auto TVM and answer. Okay, um, and uh, we also found that the the way that we only need to we only array uh, TVM will also split a loop with its factors. This way, it will make the kernel very sensitive to the input size. Uh, so if its input size is the prime number, it, it even fail to, to uh, generate the kernel. So um, because we can part, um, have better support for the partial tile, so we can, we, there is no, very, not very sensitive to the input size. Um, we also compare the performance for different batch sizes. Um, and use recent 50. We can we found that when the batch size is small, because TVM can have better load balancing. For example, we can generate enough thread blocks to the for the GPU. Usually, it can outperform the vendor library used by on, on a strong time. However, if the batch size increase, it naturally we can have enough thread blocks, and the the intra block optimizations in the vendor library can um, outperform uh, the benefit in the load balancing. So. Um, usually, um, when the batch size is large, the the model library can have a better performance. In head it, we we try to do good in both sides. Uh, in summary, uh, we proposed uh, uh, we observe the limited expressness uh, of existing um, loop oriented scheduling, and the way um, proposed task mapping program paradigm to have better support for the non loop oriented optimizations and uh, can greatly reduce the tuning time. Um, we implemented it. Uh, uh, we implement a high uh, deep learning compiler based on this idea, and uh, can achieve one point four speed up and twenty times tuning time reduction. Um, and we have um, added a front end for PyTorch, so so that we can directly use it with the help of PyTorch Dynamo. Uh, so welcome to try and uh, welcome to contribute, and we are op open to collaboration. Uh, thanks. Uh, any question? Thanks so much, Xiao Yao. A fantastic yeah. presentation and, and very interesting uh, topic to talk about. Um, let's see, I'm looking to see if anyone has any questions. Uh, please uh, feel free to add them up in the tab. Uh, I guess I have one quick question for you. Uh, and I know we're going to go to a break here, so we won't take too long. 
but mm -hmm. I was just curious. I noticed uh, it's really cool to see that expressibility in the kind of the uh, program where you can kind of refer to thread idx.x. And I was very curious um, to know if there's uh, kind of how the program gets partitioned for code gen. Um, uh, if you have to sort of outline some functions that uh, may need to run on a particular CPU thread. Um, currently, we are focused on the GPU, um, but uh, we are also working on the support for the CPU. Um, generally, uh, for the CPU, we, we use our auto scheduler to automatically uh, generate so a single thread program. So it's very slow, but we are working on to improve it. Um, for the for the function, you mean different different platform have different print, printing functions to use. So yeah, it depends on. Well, I'm just thinking like. Um... Kind of the uh, the runtime on each platform could uh, um, you could need to pull out you know the bodies of for loops if you were trying to uh, split them across threads and create separate functions and things like that. And I was curious if that's yeah. uh, pushed, put put uh, a sort of made to, um, if the code generator is responsible for doing that or if there's a compiler functionality that also does that. Um, you mean the loop body? The access to the loop body. So you mean the, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For example, we can pass the the thread index in CPU. We can use the um, multi thread to accelerate, and then we mm. can get the thread index and the, to pass into the other worker index to pass into the task mapping. So it will work also works on the CPU. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Um, well, okay. So I think we're just about on our break here, and I don't see any questions in the Q and A. So. Um, thank you so much, Yao Yao, for a uh, fantastic presentation. And uh, thank you, Andrew. And with that, um, we're going to go on to our break. Um, so I think we'll be back at uh, 2.50, so that's in 15 minutes. Uh, and then we'll have a community keynote from Don Song, followed by a round of lightning talks. So uh, don't go away. Uh, we'll be back in 15 minutes. <laughs>